Hey everybody, and welcome to a credible Wild Ride with Steve-O. I don't think that the Wild Ride podcast has ever had a guest demonstrate so much street cred in one interview. I mean, you're just thinking to yourself, man, that's how a gangster does it. And Exhibit is that. Man, what a bona fide badass. And there's just... A lot to like about him. There's a lot of juicy stuff. And get a load of when I bring up old Puff Daddy. It's hilarious. You're going to love this. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Exhibit. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, man. What's up, man? Yeah, man. Have we ever met before? No, well, I'm pretty sure in passing, but we yeah. were both pretty lit up back in the day, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've been sitting next to each other a couple times. But. Yeah, man, for sure. Well, yeah. dear, uh, thanks. Well, hey, man, well, very nice to see you, brother. You yeah, likewise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we got we got a lot in common. Yes, yes. Just about exactly the same age. Yes. Uh we uh, both lived in Albuquerque. Yeah, even absolutely. Though we weren't born yeah. there. Six, six, six degrees of Stevo. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and we both got largely screwed by MTV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, man. So, uh, and, and and we're getting together. You're letting the world know that you're jumping in the podcast game. Yeah, man. You know, actually, you know, I, there's a lot of different things. You you hit it right on the head. You know, coming from where we come from, the time we came from, we like to invent things and we keep a lot of irons in the fire. That's just the way you know it's it's been like broken down like that. So. Um, I've done like other radio shows and I've done other stuff like for Apple, like with the pharmacy and stuff I've done on TV. But this is like a space where, you know, cannabis doesn't get a lot of play in a lot of different places simply because it's not federally legal. But I wanted to have, you know, a, a place where we could come and discuss everything in the the cannabis industry. You know, there's layers to it. So um, I feel like, I, you know, I wanted to be the first one to actually dive in. Um, and create this thing called the Lasagna Gancha Podcast. So that's kind of where it came from. You know, um, I know pa- podcasting is very popular. A lot of people do it and have their own spin on it. But this is important. It's about information. It's not just us fucking sitting up smoking a gang of fucking joints. I you mean, know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> but, but, but as a matter of integrity, yes, you definitely sit there and smoke a gang of joints, right? Yeah, well, not on camera. Uh, no, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because because we want to be taken as the go to spot for people who want to low know about the industry. You know, people are really putting big investments into this yeah. industry. There's a lot of money lost. There's a lot of stuff that you know needs to be regulated and fixed. But before it goes federally legal or or descheduled, which is what we really really want. Um, is to be able to have a place where people can come and get r- accurate information. You know, not just about, you know, what strains are available or whatever, but the real business behind what this is meaning for a lot of people, you know. Why so. would you want it descheduled versus federally And, and can we illegal? just define descheduled? Yeah, descheduling means, uh, but right now it's uh, Schedule 1, which is comparable to, like, no medicinal value. This is something that is up there with cocaine and meth. A Schedule 1 narcotic, correct? Correct, correct. So to deschedule it means that it can be considered a medicine and it can be regulated, Mm -hmm. right? And it won't be, um, it, 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 it has medicinal value and purposes. Right, so, and that's what it is in California right now. It's just de- <clears throat> it's like descheduled. No, no, it's no it's that's schedule it, one federally. You know what I'm saying? Federally, yeah, yeah. it's still a schedule one. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, what What was it when you guys were like doing the up and smoke tour? Was it just highly? It illegal? was just illegal. It was, <laughs> it was like, just highly <laughs> illegal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. And we just had the best of it. You know what I'm saying? We was out there doing it. Well, we yeah. asked Tommy Chong. I maybe you can articulate this better because <laughs> we're our minds are fucking blown on his answer. But yeah. uh, Steve can right. say it better than I, I can. I, I said to, uh, I mean, some to Tommy Chong. It wasn't even really a question. It was very rhetorical. I said, "Isn't it crazy how much stronger marijuana has gotten yeah. over the years?" And he says, 
it hasn't gotten stronger. It's the same plan it ever was. You know, we had, we had the same. And, and I just thought that that was kind of peculiar. <laughs> well, that's not true, right? You can, for, for a fact, you can say that it's definitely stronger now. Um, I think, I think that from his perspective, he's correct that the plan is still the plan. That has not changed. The dynamic hasn't changed. The growing processes have changed, and the cross pollination of right. different plants to other plants have definitely gave it a, a higher THC. They, they can manipulate the plant, I, is what I'm saying. But the THC content is higher now. It could be. It could be. I, I d- dude, it, it's a combination of just THC and 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 like the terpenes and the and different things that give the, the the high. The THC is not the only thing that gets the euphoric feeling from cannabis. Okay. Right? So it has to have what's ter- it has a mixture of things that kind of make it. It's some things that test really low and can give you a really good high, a real stony high. And then there's things that turn off the charts that don't even, you know, move the needle as a sativa. So I don't know. There's 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 it's 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 different points that people will use to sell their cannabis. But yeah. it all comes down to marketing. You know, what brands want to how do you market to the, the, the thing? But the the weed is still the same. But the growing methods have changed. It's 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 concentrates have become the thing, uh-huh. you know, which you can manipulate as well and, and make it stronger, or more potent or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> My take on it is that <clears throat> humans are, are the same as as they've ever been. But the 1972 Miami Dolphins could not be the 2024 Miami Dolphins. You know, with with uh, well, that's interesting. It, it's, 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 people didn't change, but but uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Those some tough motherfuckers back in the day, man. <laughs> Right. Hey, there was some tough baby. Remember for re- Refrigerator Perry? Yeah, you know what I'm like those guys don't exist in the NFL uh-uh. anymore. Uh-uh. No way. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, then like, like the like the '70s Dallas, like they all just look like men. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> they look. They don't look like men. I mean, obviously they're fucking, but. Those just look I like I think that, that, that supplements, like training, but I mean, whatever. Like, I just think people are, uh, like, like techniques improve, and, and so does the quality. But I, but I, I like your your response to that. It's, it is the same plant. Yeah. I suppose technically, uh, you know, s- some people probably got a little bit lucky on a few strains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh yeah, man, that dude, the, the, this career, I think. Uh, but I congratulate, but on a side note, let me just say this. We're talking about cannabis, and I know, you know, we've we've both come through some crazy-ass times. Congratulations on um, being sober. Thank you, know you man. Um, I think that's dope. Um, you know, like, we, I, I just recently quit smoking cigarettes. You know there what I'm you saying? go. I, 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 for some dumb reason, I started, like, when I was on a TV show, and then it's like I smoked for three, four years, and I just like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. I was just like, because I couldn't smoke weed all day. You know what I'm saying? Because I was actually doing something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I picked up this dumbass habit, and then I just stopped. This is like a, just a soothing thing. So, you know, right. I, I understand it's a constant thing, and that's just on a small level. So, Well, you know. I, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. And I'm, I'm super grateful for my sobriety. I, I'm also not California sober, so it, it, yeah. uh, it's, it's been a long time since I smoked the weed. And if I'm honest, uh, I feel hard done by it sometimes. You know, I, I really do. Like, uh, when, I, don't, I don't like to smell weed. Because number one, uh, I love the smell of weed, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and when I when I smell it, I feel like oh man, I would just wish I could smoke it. And uh, also, like when I'm smelling it, I just know that I'm breathing it into my body, and and and, and I just can't have it in there. So, wow. I wow. mean, I'm not saying that I'm not glad I'm sober. I'm ab- absolutely glad I'm sober, but. If I could smoke weed and get away with it, man, that would be cool. Wow. I, I just don't believe that I can. Okay, so when you say, I'm just I'm just asking questions. Yeah, go for it. So when you say you can't get away with it, meaning that is a personal kind of boundary you set for yourself? Or do you know that weed is really going to lead to something yeah. else or a relapse or whatever? You, yeah. The way you that think I, that? The, the way I describe it, my, my uh, weed bone is connected to my booze bone, mm. which is connected to my coke bone, which mm. is connected to my pill bone. 
Wow. And, and, and I'm, I'm off the rails. I go zero to Charlie Sheen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like in very, yeah. a very short time is, yeah. is what I believe. I just don't want to test it. So yeah, understood. I'm, uh, I, I'm much better off. But, um, but yeah, you know what? I also, I'm not mad at weed. I right. think, uh, you know, like I, I would compare it to if I was diabetic, mm. I couldn't have sugar. Mm. That doesn't make sugar evil. It doesn't make me think like, oh, you're bad for having sugar. It's just, right. I can't have it. Right, understood. Do you think it should be federally Ill- uh, legal? Um, a- absolutely. And, and yeah, it's interesting. Sure. Uh, our guy Isaac is bringing up um, news articles on our screen here. It's in, and marijuana is very much in the news. Three weeks ago, we've got most Americans want legal pot. Here is why the feds are taking so long to change old rules. Can we just say thank the heavens that Americans are not having that same problem with blue chew tablets? What are blue chew tablets? Well, they're delicious, chewable tablets that have the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except they only cost a fraction of the price. And for the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast, get a load of this. You can get an entire month supply of blue chew tablets completely for free. All you have to pay is five bucks for shipping. It's one of the greatest deals that you could ever be offered. And blue chew tablets happen to be a ton of fun. I personally love taking them and then about 30 minutes later, ushering my lady into the bedroom for some intimacy. And let me tell you, she loves it too. Now, if you want to give this a try, what you do is you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo and you consult with the medical provider right there on the website. It takes just a couple minutes and then boom, you've got your prescription and an entire month supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free all you pay is five bucks for shipping. And if you've ever been wondering if it might be a lot of fun, let me assure you, it is. So get on over to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo. And let's get back to it. Yeah, they can't tax it enough. They, they, they don't, they, actually, they, 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 we're the guinea pigs us out here, California being the biggest market. Um, they're trying to figure out how to tax it. They haven't figured it out. They haven't, <laughs> they don't know what's too much. They don't know what's too little. <clears throat> what's the tax on it now? Like twenty five percent? Fuck! I wish. It's, oh, really? it, yeah, yeah. It's 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 it, at the end of the day with all the taxes because every step is taxed. You go from yeah. distribution yeah. to cultivation to manufacturing to retail. <laughs> every step of the way is taxed, which is uh, it's it's over it's over regulated, over taxed. Ninety, we pay more than alcohol and tobacco, mm. you know, it, which is absolutely crazy. So, um, I would say at the end of the day, you're looking at more like thirty, forty percent, yeah, um, for each dollar that goes out, right? And that's before you get to with your, no write-offs. Wow, that's before you get to your, uh, you know, your state income tax, your federal correct. Tax. Correct, and then you also have to keep your overhead. You also have to, no matter what industry you're in, whether you go from seed to sale, whatever industry you're in in cannabis, you are barely making margins, and everybody is robbing Peter to pay Paul, which is a, a disgrace. So what they're doing is they got us in this little bubble, and there's, there's various states that are like going harder than others, but California being the biggest market, um, like they're doing a lot of things wrong. And so they're really making it hard for the guys that actually are building the industry and building the, 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 the blueprints, um, to actually make it so that when it's all, you know, built and done, then they can come through and just federal legalize it and crush all the, all the little guys and come through with, you know, transforming these different big fields that they grow in corn and corn and soybeans in. Mm-hmm. And now that's a profitable cannabis facility, you know, just switch over to seeds. Yeah. Cause it's a better uh, yield than anything we have like cotton. Uh, so because it turns over every three months. Correct. But um, 
the uh, there was a, a documentary series that I watched on Netflix called Murder Mountain. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, it's a family film. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's Christmas movies. Yeah, it, 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 it was all about the cannabis industry uh-huh. and and specifically in Humboldt County, yes. California, yeah. where they describe they describe it as Murder Mountain because it it was just like the Wild West. West. People would go missing and the, the whole thing. <clears throat> you know, they, they it, it felt like they were painting a, a, a bad picture of, um, you know, the black market marijuana trade. Yeah. But the way that it played out, they, uh, they, they, they talked about the legalization mm-hmm. at the end of it. And the consensus seemed to be that all the growers were way worse off with legalization than they Absolutely. were before mm-hmm. when people were going missing, murdered, like all that, because just because the government is almost like, like alcohol, like no little like individual person making small amounts of beer is ever going to be able to compete with Budweiser. <laughs> right. And that's kind of what they're doing with the marijuana industry. Right. right? Correct. Like, I, I, they, they keep the little guys little so the big guys can come in and just take it over when it's to a good safe place. Um, right. And yeah. in, in order just to just get started in, in a marijuana business, mm-hmm. just by the time you've registered yourself with a license as a grower, license yeah. as a <clears throat> seller, like, I mean, it, it, it it's such a humongous investment. Absolutely. That you're, like, years into yeah. business before you even break even. Yeah, and I thought entertainment guys were sleazy. Man, yeah, <laughs> yeah you have no idea. I mean, like, marijuana guys will do stuff to their mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, when I was consulting for that, that weed company, they won first place at High Times in 2018. Uh-huh. They're getting into market and they just pulled out and they're like, dude, we can't compete with all the taxes that goes into it. Correct, correct. I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's, but they, they have it like that for a reason. But, I mean, look, you know, the, to, there's a, there's, there's a good reason to stay and fight if you've already did the, the legwork and done enough yeah. in here. Like, I've built two brands. I've been, you know, part of some big groups. I've seen a lot of the bigger transactions happen in cannabis. Um, and, you know, start. I'm, I have my first store opening in Bel Air on the 16th. Wow. Oh, yeah, 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 What's it yeah. called? It's called Exhibits <laughs> West Coast Cannabis. <laughs> XWCC. Nice. Yeah. In Bel Air, huh? Yes, yes. They don't really have strip malls in Bel Air. Huh? No, it does. Yeah, there it is over there. Wow. Yeah. It's a, a boutique. Uh, now, do you have to have like a squeaky a clean record to be able to get into the industry? Like, if you're somebody with. Are you fucking with, kidding me? Like no. A, a I mean, felony. it's like. <laughs> like, if you yeah, have a felony you, on your record. Or, if you've been to jail for cannabis, yeah. you actually get put to the front of the line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's a requisite. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. okay, but you see, you have two brand names. It Napalm. Was that the first Napalm. one or the second one? Second one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I saw that they were they were giving you backlash over mm-hmm. the name Napalm. Mm-hmm. The fuck out of here! <laughs> yeah, that was that was, you know, that was that was unfortunate because you know not only did I actually have to address being a a racist or a bigot or whatever it was, you know, it's it's selective selective rage. You know, when I when I when I put out an album called Napalm in 2014. Nobody had anything to say about it. It was an artistic expression. It was about, you know, the fire music that we're doing. Yeah. I, I did all of that. And then when it came to actually, you know, what the issue was with Napalm, the cannabis brand, it, it, it turned out to be a disgruntled employee, somebody that had, you know, been fired and then decided to go on this campaign. And I think was I, it's not even about them. I think what really was upsetting was that, you know, people ran with that that actually know me. You know what well, I'm saying? Right. Like I people, mean, what's racist about it? Um, because they said that I was uh, using uh, Asian hate because napalm was used on people what? in Vietnam. Oh my god! How do you connect those? I mean, it, man, with a whole bunch of dental floss and duct tape. You know what I'm saying? It's, it was it was a stretch. It was yeah. a stretch. I mean, you know? it's just so. But yeah. but but again again you know we have to address with that but it's the time we're living in. I really have to go after you know twenty some years of hip hop and twenty some years of being in a public eye and never having any of these issues or having to be having to address any of these things right. in twenty twenty three twenty twenty one or whatever that was. 
I have to tell people that I'm not a racist. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, like I think, hello, I think I would know. Okay, never mind. We're just, you know, we're just gonna, yeah. we're just gonna go past. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. if anybody knows about fucking racism, it'd be me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what's your preferred method of smoking? If you had one, um, one. um, I, I, I like, I like to roll a joint or, or a blunt or something like that. But more papers now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm 49. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't. I used to be able to drink a whole Hennessy fifth. You know what I'm saying? Some it once said it, yeah, but it I call gift. it a gift. But <laughs> my body, well, I, I've learned, I've learned, and my engine don't work like that no right, more. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, it's hard. You know, I just you have to listen to you have to listen to your heart, your soul, your body. You know, and for me, you know, I I, I used to go hard, 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 but. You know, for who am I doing that for? You know what I'm saying? It's, that's, it yeah. doesn't feel good. So, yeah. you know, right now, a little joint, a fucking glass of wine, boom, I'm good. Me Probably and my lady, we're chilling. That's it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I don't fucking need to fucking drink a whole bottle yeah. and not remember what the fuck I, I, I did the, the, the night before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I applaud you for not changing the name of Napalm. Never. Yeah, I for think, real. Never. Yeah, I mean it's it's fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to sh you have to <laughs> yeah. prove to me and the rest of the people that this is the specific reason I use this name. You have right. to prove it's not for me to prove. You right. have to go and show the, this this yeah. pathway of evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That I'm supposedly on, and you, it's your burden of proof. Yeah, go ahead. Good luck. We live in, in uh, <laughs> we live in crazy times. Why yeah. did you choose Bel Air? It chose me. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I felt that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, that's so great. <laughs> um, and uh, it, okay, so people are so sensitive these mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. But still, like, it, like my my personal observation. Watch me get in trouble for this. But, yeah. <laughs> but you know, like with the Me Too movement mm -hmm. started in in 2017, mm -hmm. right? Like 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 way back then. But still, people <coughs> keep coming out of the woodwork. Like, mm -hmm. how how do we how do they not get everybody? You know, like <laughs> how, how how do they, how do they not get everybody? Where after all that, like, what was it? Just like this past year, maybe six months ago, all of a sudden it was Russell Brand. Like, how did that not come up over the last? Well, the since tape, the tape brothers just got arrested again last night for uh, right. some some assault shit in the UK. And, and I say that pointing to how it was years ago, X. Mm -hmm. That you called it out. You blew the whistle mm -hmm. on Diddy. You see, that was a long rip segue into that motherfucking video. I'll see you. Yeah. He was like, let me get around this corner. <laughs> yeah. I, see how you, I see what I'm you did there. You, I'm telling you. How I see what you did. Dude, I'm fucking, I'm not fucking <laughs> talking about that. <this. laughs> <laughs> he stayed good. under the radar. All right, man. We, we, we don't even need to go there. Yeah. But, but uh, man, I, I mean, I'm, it's crazy. It, it's crazy. Um. So, uh, okay. Now, and, and I don't think we need to, to overly get into the the man that how fucked up it is that shit you did to those cards. <laughs> man, man, it's messed up what you did. Yeah, I know. I know. I did it. I was down there. I I did every single piece of that shit. Yeah. Nah, it's it's crazy, man. The, the amazing times that was had with MTV involved. I'm gonna have to say ditto. I had a lot of good times back in the MTV days as well, but sadly back then, I was not a picture of health. And these days, I am a picture of health, and a very big part of why is that I drink enough water now. You gotta stay hydrated out there, people, and you gotta do your part to save the world. And that's why Liquid Death is the water to drink, because it comes in infinitely recyclable cans, which are good for the environment. Do you know that at the rate that we're going, by 2050, plastic is gonna outweigh fish in the ocean? I mean, jeez. Liquid death is what it is all about. 
And if you go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo, you'll find all their whole range of healthy, infinitely recyclable beverages. And if you go on Amazon, then you can get free shipping for all kinds of liquid death waters and iced teas and everything. And if you want to just grab it at the store, they're in Target. They're in 7-Eleven. I mean, Whole Foods. Like, they're, they're kind of everywhere. The company has been blowing up because they're awesome people. And if you drink liquid death, you're an awesome person too. So check out all their merch. Check out all their stuff, liquiddeath.com slash Stevo. And be drinking plenty of water because that, is the fountain of youth. Be healthy, look good, feel good, and save the world. That's what liquid death is all about. Now, let's get back to it. You right. know, even for even a bigger a bigger play for you guys, you know what I'm saying? Like with the whole jackass run into sprouting out you guys having your own solo. You guys were like the Wu Tang of MTV. You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. had the group and you had spinoffs, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, that's yeah. interesting, man. Yeah, it's like the Wu Tang clan of MTV. Yeah, and you guys I like had, that. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? You guys had like, you know, your show, Bam Show, you know what I'm saying? Wild like Wars. Knoxville, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah. Like it just it just spread out like that. So when I came in um, it was a time where, you know, um, they were doing that. They, they, they first of all they put pimp, pimp my ride on at like ten o'clock at night, and and then uh, when it when it did well, even at that hour, then it started growing going up and getting you know better slots or whatever that is. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, I look at the culture cultural impact that those shows, your shows, what what pimp my ride did. And it was like, yo, you don't know how many people come up and be like, yo, you were a big part of my childhood. Like you were, big, right. you were a big part of how you know I was raised and all this. I was like, shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if, if that was, if I don't know if that's a compliment or that's like, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, yeah. But I mean, all over fun. the world. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, it would hit pop culture like a fucking a meteor, and it was dope to be able. We didn't know what we were doing because we were having fun doing it. But you know this stuff is is here for forever. You know what I'm saying, and right? Yeah, and we had we had a cultural impact that I don't know if you know 16 and pregnant is having. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. same way. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> did you come up with the idea, or was or did somebody no, pitch the idea? No, to you? no. Actually, it was a guy named Rick Hervitz, um, um, who approached me. I was actually at West Coast Customs getting my cars done. Actually, me. And Shaquille O'Neal were probably the only ones that were going through there at the time. Um, he had other business, but I mean, I, as far as I can remember, me and Shaq was going through getting like real cars done. And this guy named Rick Herberts was there and asked me if I wanted to host a show. And uh, you know, I, I was reluctant at first because at the time, hip hop artists weren't fucking with anything reality TV. That mm -hmm. was like a big fucking no no. <clears throat> yeah, maybe Cribs. Yeah, maybe maybe Krebs at at the time, yeah. But you were still being you. This was right. a complete departure from anything that I had been doing in my music. You know, like me being funny on camera, that was like what motherfuckers did never even smiled at hip hop pictures. Remember you <laughs> being full blown it'd be a full blown conversation when you laughing like this, like can I take a picture? Like <laughs> yeah, and right. then go back to it. You know what right. I'm saying? I, I saw you said that, that you just wanted to do pimp my ride because you wanted MTV to play. Your yeah, music I just videos. wanted to play my fucking music videos. <laughs> right, and that that's really really interesting. Man. Yeah. Um. So, so so that that happens. It's like what, what year did that happen? Oh uh, three to oh six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh three to oh six. But man. did you get any backlash from the hip hop community for doing it? In the beginning, yeah, because it was new. It was the first of its kind. Yeah. It didn't really have um it didn't really have anything to compare it to. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But you know, cause I was this is at the height of like a lot of music that I was doing. Um, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> yeah. And so it was just like when this started getting bigger than the music, then I was like I didn't understand it at the time and I was a little I, I was too close to it. But in no hindsight is twenty twenty now. When I look at it now, it's like thank God. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it gave me a foothold in 
and and global being a global artist more than any kind of music. It was people that knew about me from the show that knew about my music mm-hmm. at at certain points. And then when I started doing film, then it kind of like everything kind of catches up to each other. If they if they looked at my the film and didn't know, then they would find Pimp My Ride, or then yeah. they would go look for the music, and then it would kind of like they started feeding each other, and so yeah. then it become like I, you know I didn't have to be this like top forty pop guy, you know, you know, doing all that kind of you know yeah. music in order to have uh, impact an uh, impact and staying power just as much as those artists. So it just did me it did me a favor. It, actually like solidified me as an artist around the world hmm. the, the guys told me that uh the up and smoke tour had attendance of like two hundred and fifty thousand people mm-hmm. where do you fit that many people uh you gotta break it up you gotta break it up steve <laughs> <laughs> no but what, what, was it the up and right. smoke tour you're talking yeah, about yeah that was uh that, that's what it said right or was like it the the anger management? <laughs> oh no anger management it you was did anger three shows yeah yeah i was like yeah that's pretty sounds right right but it was like it was like 10 shows uh, you know what i'm saying right. 10, yeah. 10, 10 yeah. Shows. you're talking about the anger management we did in milton keys mm-hmm. in milton keys it was two hundred and fifty thousand people three days in a row sold out yeah, we're looking that up. We're like, well, how big was Woodstock? And Woodstock was like 460,000 people. Right, right. So that's fucking massive. Yeah, and Milton Keys, yeah, that was it. it, it 250,000 people. You remember that like it was yesterday? I do. I do. Three nights in a row. It was amazing. What, where's Milton Keynes? Milton Keynes is right outside of London in the UK. It's oh, outside of London, okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. Yeah. Yeah, when when you're, I always ask like uh, musicians this because back then, you know, weed was illegal. Did you have somebody meet you there with weed, or did you guys like smuggle it into different places? And what was your favorite? I mean, weed and music go hand in hand. They, they, it's all, it's always been that way. But so, what was your favorite? Like, how did you guys smuggle it to get into places where it was like illegal? Well, I, well I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the what the person. fuck, man? Yeah. Like, you're the I'm first not gonna person. spoil it. But for t- a Tommy, <laughs> Tommy Lee told us where he put his coke. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Well, Tommy Lee did a lot of shit that he said he won't do. Yeah. You know yeah. Yeah, sorry to put you on the spot. I, mean, I, I, can't, I can't give you my trade secrets. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I love that, dude. You're like, you're like, Scott's asked so many people that in this van, and, and you're the first person to say, I'm yeah. not telling you like that. You know what's so funny, too? Like, I, I watch all his true crime. Yeah. You know, like yeah. true crime. And, and, and true crime is pretty popular. So I'm trying to figure it out when. Are the gangsters gonna <laughs> learn to say nothing? I mean, yeah, yeah. Give me a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Am yeah, I arrested? Lawyer. Let me talk to my lawyer. Right? I mean, dude, like you would think that the the people would get wise to it, but every yeah. single show yeah. they just sit there and just yeah. And and right now we got we got proof. The ex is not He's gonna be one of the seasons of that. <laughs> yeah. The ex is gonna be like, yeah, dude, like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, yeah. You can't volunteer that information. Right. Yeah. Yo. It's a good answer. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. Although we've had some goodies, we've had some doozies, some close calls. Yes. Wait, so, so during all of the, the, the crazy heyday, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're on Dr. Dre's 2001 chronic, like mm-hmm. all, all this stuff, like, like you're in, in the middle of just gnarly, like gangster rap culture. Mm-hmm. Like, like how real did it get, like with just the the guns and and mm. the, the 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 feuds mm. and like were you, were you ever running around rocking a bulletproof vest for real uh yeah yeah i guess <laughs> 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 yeah but i mean it wasn't weird and it wasn't new to me you know what i'm saying like um it was it was it was a pretty violent shit going on back in the day but that was happening before i was even in music and a lot of people say that, but it, it's different when, you know, when you get in and you are really from that, you don't glorify it and you don't, you know, carry, you don't, you don't let lead with that. Right, you right, right. You know what I'm saying? You don't lead with your trauma. You know, you're doing this music, you're doing this entertainment to get away from uh-huh. being, having to be in that environment. So, you know, when it follows you, when it follows you, your, your past follows you. It, it goes all the way, all the way to the end of your life with you. 
<laughs> and so what you got, got to do is try to balance it. You know what I'm saying? And everybody can't go. A lot of people that I was hanging out with when I was a kid aren't going to exist in the corporate structure. They're not going to understand to carry themselves and read the room and understand what that room is about. Right. You can't scare the fuck out of people bringing the wrong individual into a room with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so I choose, you know, I choose to, you know, I chose to, you know, um, grow with, with 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 my with my career and yeah. you know not everybody can go you know you you don't have to leave people behind but you can definitely dictate who walks in the rooms with you and i yeah. think that's what it that's what it boiled down to yeah i mean it it got real it got really real you know what i'm saying so a lot of us didn't make it a lot of us you know fell into you know having to keep up that image or or, or try to keep up that 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 face you know what i'm saying when when they really not like that, you know what I'm saying? And the, the circumstances may have changed for you. You right. know what I'm saying? So stay in your moment. Stay with your truth. You know, fuck, no, I'm not fucking, I'm not, I don't have nothing to prove no more. I'm good. I don't give a fuck what you say to me. <laughs> fuck you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, say what you want to say. I'm over here. I'm chilling. Yeah. Right. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and I want and I want people I want other people that come from where I came from to get to where I am as well. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful thing to to, to live past your 20s, guys. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to live into your 30s and 40s and see your children grow and see their kids have kids. It's all right to see the the grades come in. Motherfucker, no, you're not going to be fucking you know you're not going to be Mr. Fantastic all your fucking life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But but there's beauty in what these years bring. These are the championship rounds. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like 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 live live a little. It's hard it's easy to die. It's hard to live. I couldn't agree more. Plus, it's extra hard to live when you don't have money. So, it's time to start making money. When you can build an audience online, why not sell stuff to that audience? And if you're going to be making orders happen, then you're going to have to make shipments happen. And that's where ShipStation comes into play. It's one easy to use interface, which brings together all of your different carriers, the United States Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, all of your different ways of shipping, coupled with the best rates you can get from those carriers, plus all of the different ways that you can sell stuff online, like Etsy, Amazon, your own website, eBay. It all happens in one easy to use interface. And when you make that order, it prints out a label. You put the goods in the box, slap the label on, and off it goes to your customer. Easy as that. It couldn't be a better service. It couldn't be cheaper. There's no other way to get cheaper shipping. I'm telling you, this is how I have sold so much stuff online, and that has made life a lot easier. Life doesn't have to be so hard when you can put together your own e-commerce business so easily with the help of ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use the promo code Stevo to get a 60-day risk-free trial that's free. I mean, there's nothing to lose. And it is time to make ship happen. So one more time, go to ShipStation.com and use the promo code Stevo to get that free trial period underway. You'll be glad you did, and life's going to get a lot easier when you do. So let's get back to it. For sure. That, you know what I'm saying? That's something that I say all the time, man. Yeah. And uh, I, I really do. Yeah. Um, when... Uh, when the show ends, what is it? Oh, six. My ride and ends in 07. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I then, think it was like four years, something like that. I don't yeah. Know. Six seasons. Yeah. Uh, seven seasons. Seven. Yeah, I think. But uh, what, what's crazy, I, I saw that uh, in 2009, they said you tried to file for bankruptcy. I never heard of hmm. trying. To file for bankruptcy. I don't know. But, <laughs> I don't know either. But the, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know the, the 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 story 
the story is that you know you, you get into tax trouble mm-hmm. and then it takes you a certain amount of time, but you pay it off legit. You're you know you're back in the game and everything's good. Yeah. And I think that that is more inspiring than any of the other shit. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I dude, I just, look, dude, I'm a survivor. You know, I've never been challenged with, with anything that I felt like I'm defeated. Yeah, it may take me a minute, but I'll figure it out. You yeah. know, I've I've been in I've been <clears throat> in some really shitty situations, but I've never lost hope or faith because that's pretty much all you need to to get back up and keep going. You know, I've been you know I've, I've been blessed with being able to have resilience. I just don't quit. I don't have any secrets. I don't have any motherfucking secret sauce, sauces or formula or I don't have any motivational speeches. Oh, fuck. I don't, I don't <laughs> fuck me. I just, you know, I guess, I guess what I, I have an idea to write my book when it's, when it's time. And this should <clears throat> sum it up for you. The title of my book is going to be, can, but can you take a punch? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, can you take a punch? <clears throat> You know, yeah. a lot of people get punched in the face and then the world is crumbled. Like, yeah, I've been hit pretty fucking hard. So, you know, you're not going to do shit to me that hasn't been done already. Not mm-hmm. the way I feel. Hmm. Yeah, dude, that's that's epic, man. When, when did uh, when did 8 Mile come and how do you get that job? Does Eminem call you and say, yo, you want to be in my movie? Or do you have to like... No, I think Paul called me. Paul Rosenberg. Paul. He's like, yo, you want to be in the movie? Mm-hmm. I was like, sure. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the the, the uh, freestyle that you did in the movie, uh-huh. they, they wrote it for you? No, I wrote my part. Oh, okay. And then Eminem, I don't know if he, yeah, he had to write his, he, they had something written for me, and I was like, I'm not saying that. Uh, so I, I just wrote what I, the trailer, I wrote what I was supposed to say right before the scene. Oh, right before it? Uh-huh. Is it true that he wrote the lyrics <clears throat> for the end rap battles? Do you know if that's true or not? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I, I just wrote my... I just know in the scene he had something written for me, and I was like, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when... Uh, okay, so the, when, when you're in the, the tax trouble situation, like, mm-hmm. how do you first find out? Like, oh, man, dude, like... You know, I, I can, what do you mean? What, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. motherfuckers show up. <laughs> wow, yeah. motherfuckers I, I can, showed up. I yeah. can absolutely imagine. But the, sir, it's because you just didn't have like uh, business managers. Oh no, like I had that. all of that. I had all of that. Just because you have a business manager doesn't mean that they're handling your business. Right. Okay. You know. Um, the, I, I, I'm not here to throw people under the bus or point fingers because that's irrelevant at this point. Um, at the end of the day, it's my fault. Fair enough. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's my fault. I am responsible for my career, and I have to know that, yes, yeah, just good as good as a business, as good as a musician I could be, I have to be just as good in business. It's called the music business for a reason. So, 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 you know, once you look, I, I didn't go to college. I don't know if you went to college, uh, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> right, right. But this was our college. Yeah, this was an expensive fucking education to know that. This is every time some piece of paper comes across my de- desk, I know exactly what to look for. I know exactly what the bullshit is. I know exactly who to send this to. I trust no one. This is this is business. Let me verify everything that you're talking about to make sure that what we're talking about is staying on the same page. And it's just that meticulous. You have to just double check and verify every fucking thing that you agree to, that you're about to agree to, that your brand is going to be involved with. Yeah. And that's just the way it fucking is. And, and people will try to fuck you, squeeze you, but you know, break you, <laughs> take you, take everything from you, tell you that you what you what you're bringing to the table is worthless, and what they're bringing to the table is worth everything. So it's just like, okay, cool. You got to figure out where where do you want to do business? Where do you not want to do business? And everybody is on the same page. Um, and it's keeping people there. It's, it's a very, very fucked up thing. You don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. So I don't, I don't really worry about, I don't really worry about, you know, having to conduct myself in that way, but nobody's, nobody's ever going to come up and do fair business with you that you don't have to double check and verify. It's just, that's with friends, Mm -hmm. family, whatever you have to go through the due diligence. 
Man, that that straight man shit, dude. That, yeah. that 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 I respect that so much. Like, just uh, taking accountability for yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. I agree to it. At the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, right. Now, when you trust people, you expect them to do what they say they're gonna do. But if you don't verify that, if you don't double check that, or have somebody to check them. And then check the person that you check. <laughs> like you have to, like you have to do multiple, right. you know, layers of this. So and it's just fucked up, man. But yeah, yeah it, like I said, this is an expensive ass learning curve that I had to go and lose lots of fucking things. Not only through MTV, but not only through other agreements that I've made, but you know, just dealing with fucked up people. You know what I'm saying? And then that, that's a lesson in <clears throat> itself. You know. Yeah, it's like uh, you can either go to college or start a small business. Right. You're going to spend the same amount of money learning the mistakes. Mm. You know what I mean? So it, it all just the compensation at the end is all equal. Absolutely, out. absolutely. When you said they they showed up, you mm. mean the IRS like raided you? No, they don't raid. They just show up very calmly with fucking badges <laughs> on their belts, and they just asked to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and uh, at, at, at the point that that happens what you're at your house they show up at your house no no they was, yeah, I, I met I met them they're very nice people you know <laughs> yeah they're about, to, they're about to get paid they're just fucking doing their job you know what I'm yeah, saying right. yeah, yeah fucking they're so, not like freeze you know what I'm saying so they send you a letter and schedule an appointment and you go meet up with them pretty much and, pretty and, much. And, and when that happens did they give you like bottom line a dollar no, amount that you owe no no, I wouldn't suggest that anybody actually talk to the IRS face to face. Always get representation or or lawyer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. I, would, I wouldn't suggest. I would. I, I listen. Just because I did it doesn't mean that you should. <laughs> All right, oh, man. The one time. No, the one time. You no, go, it was <laughs> it was a man and a woman. They showed up to my business manager's office. It was a very nice conversation. There was uh, no guns, no nothing. You understand? Yeah. No, no detainment, no yeah. handcuffs. It's listen, man. You know. Uh, it, it's it was it was it was very strange, you know the the way that the way that it happened. Um, but I mean, well, look when you when you make enough noise and and you yeah. you have your planets aligned, and they want to come get you, they will. You know what I'm saying? So right. I don't know if it's a method or <clears throat> algorithm or whatever it is, but right. they 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 they've been on my ass for a while. So you know, Did they but, but I had to, I had to handle it. You know, yeah. yeah, there's payment plans you can get on for the rest of your life and you'll be paying them forever. And then when you die, whatever's left, they're going to come get and your family's fucked. But I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, did I'm they cool. ask for a selfie or an autograph afterwards? <laughs> uh, no, 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 okay. no, no, they, no, they, they, no, Uncle Sam's not going to fuck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, uh, I, I think. I, I think that that is, is like the, the most valuable things because I, I look at people okay look but look look here's the thing so i'm gonna say this this is the only interesting thing that came out of that right when i went and paid my taxes uh uh i went and paid it in cash right and it was only me and one other guy from colorado that did it and so the interesting thing was i thought i was going to be able to just come and you know Drop it, count it with them. <coughs> so you're talking about them. actual paper, bags Correct. of Correct. money. No, no, just two little, two, 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 two truckloads. Yeah, no, two little boxes, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <clears throat> so I walk in the room. I leave. I'm, I'm on the table. I, I come in this room. They, I'm on one side of the table. The agents are on the other side of the table, and there's money counters there. I have to count it. <laughs> I have to hand it to them. There's significance in that. They're not allowed to touch it wow. until I <laughs> hand it to them. Hmm. So there's a law that says that paying taxes is a voluntary act. Oh, come on. <laughs> I swear to God. Paying, ta to paying taxes is a voluntary act. So it is illegal for them to actually touch my money until I hand it to them. Give it to them. Okay, but it's also illegal to not hand it to them. <laughs> Is it? I, mean, I don't know. I, from what I gather. You just asked the magic question. I asked Wesley Snipes. <laughs> asked fucking. Is it New though? Jersey. You're right. 
Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Now, well, now the consequences of not handing it to them, right? It, it may be so, but it's not illegal, right? I, I'm not trying to test that theory. <laughs> okay, but I, <laughs> but I. You ever think about leaving California because of the taxes? Uh, no. I left California. I'm leaving California because of my divorce. It's just too many people in my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can All you right. say where you're yeah. going? Huh? Can you say where you're going? Yeah, I'm going right across the street. I'm going to Vegas. I come back and forth. I just read an article. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, take a flight. Yeah. I just read an article uh, on the way here. It was saying that <coughs> Summerlin is going to be Hollywood 2.0. So they're putting in like 500,000 square foot of studio to be yeah. the next like movie destination. Right. For yeah, I mean, yeah, the taxes, that tax thing might be cool. But, you know, there's, there's, a, there's I've been here. You know, since I was seventeen, I'll always consider California my 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 home. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, I yeah. may move around, but I mean, look, it's it's time to expand the horizons, get some real estate investments, yeah, get some get yeah. some land going. You know, be able to move around for sure. Yeah. You fly private, huh? Commercial or private? Commercial. What the Commercial? fuck? Yeah. Well, we, we, we just had uh, um, Birdman. Birdman. Birdman was like, dude, I haven't flown commercial in thirty years. Okay. I mean, well, shit, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, some places you can't go privately, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know. I think, uh, you know, just to, to, to close the loop on, on the, uh, the, the financial stuff, that we, we've talked to a lot of people on this podcast, mm. and, the, and the people who... I, here, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Is it cool if we open up a door? Yeah, Is that gonna yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. The people who really like I, I've, I felt ha had the most humility are the people who came up and then lost it and then Got came it back. back. Yeah, like and, and to compare that to people who like don't have it. But they got to maintain the image if they do have it. That's yeah. to me like pure hell, man. I don't, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be that man. It's called keeping up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. right? Right, yeah. and 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 just like maintaining an image, and and there's just <coughs> it, it's it just feels like such a trap to fall into, it and is. I feel like. But I mean, the biggest the biggest prison cells exist inside of our minds yeah so sure. the things that we hold ourselves to the things that we actually feel like oh man um uh, i gotta i gotta i gotta have this on or i gotta look this right. way in order to to be successful i would tell people all the time i talk to i talk to the like, kids and shit all the time and they think it's they think it's about this chain or thinking it's about having this car or, i'd be like listen man you know don't have the illusion of success you know what i'm saying like really be successful put some things behind you and <laughs> what the fuck is that I, I i don't know man somebody it's probably one of my friends still like come on dude it's not 1995 <laughs> 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 you, you at least gotta have a kicker box is he leaving um what's up man Hey, hey, man! Turn that shit off, Quest. There you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look at that. He says you guys look like surveillance out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, it's one of my guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, but what were you saying? Sorry. I mean, you, you you were saying about not having the illusion. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't success. have the illusion of success. You know, I tell. I, 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 we gonna have to jump jump back for this, but uh, I I'll, I always tell people, you know. We, we meaning, especially for my culture, want the illusion of success, meaning that, you know, as long as I have this on, I have this car, I have this jo this jewelry, then, you know, uh, people will perceive me as successful. But really, you know, I, I don't have a, a, a real substantial future generational wealth. I don't have a business that I could pass right. down to my kids. And, you know, the things that other cultures are really focused on, we wear our wealth. And I always frown down upon that because, you know, like I'm part of that too. Like I had the big chains and the watches and, and all that stuff. And it did, it pacified me for a minute, but really, you know, success, real success is being able to, you know, um, have the, you know, substantial resources for your kids. Your money is a tool. It's not yeah. a status symbol. It's right? freedom. Right. Um, to some, 
you know but really money is a tool it, it's just like a wrench or a hammer you use it and some people use it better than others uh, some people can become craftsmen some people just want to fix the fucking leak under the sink and that's it you know but it doesn't make you better it doesn't make you stronger smarter faster it is a tool so um i always tell people you know build something my grandfather taught me about money and now it makes sense you know if he says if it's if you can afford it you know if you can't afford it three times you can't afford it once hmm. you know wow. you know that, that's a very simple thing that you can look at and be like listen oh that makes sense just because <laughs> you can buy it one time like like if we get a nine hundred thousand dollar check first thing you want to do is go spend eight hundred nine eight hundred ninety thousand yeah. dollars you know what i'm saying yeah with no thought of what that means after taxes and what that, you know, people right. let you spend it all day, but that's what goes back to what we were saying before. I have to be accountable for what I was doing and where I was spending and what I chose to do with my money, you know, on top of what they didn't do on, on my behalf. So it just all turned into a shit show, but you learn, you yeah. grow, you come back from that. And then you make something better, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you listen and learn from the lessons that you, that, you know, we both learn, then yeah, you know, we can come in and in, in, in our later days and not be distracted and do be make better choices with our money and watch it go a lot further. You know what yeah, I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's some examples people we talk to. The lead singer of Twisted Sister, yeah. Dee Snyder. Yeah. He had, I want to rock, we're not going to take it, all these huge things. And then it just went away. And yeah. the dude literally took a job as a telemarketer mm -hmm. when he was D. Snyder of Twisted Sister. Mm -hmm. And like, and, and he, he, he the, the humility that he got out of that, you know, like the, the, the way that it, it made him a man, the way that he grew up and, and just was an improved version. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, another guy, T-Pain. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's my guy. Yeah, T Pain. I really applaud him and see where he's at right now. Yeah, he's done really well for himself. For sure, and and I just think that there's uh, that there's a lot to be said for falling on your ass and and letting that deflate your ego, mm. and then like moving <laughs> forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, the, the ego's a, a motherfucker, man. Your ego is not your amigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it's so it's crazy, man. And and, and T Pain also he he talked to us about all all the fake jewelry. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. I yes. mean, like when like if, if you got real jewelry, isn't that just kind of sucker shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't be fooled by them jokers and them rented automotives. Funny looking in them chokers. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's wild, man. But but that's inspiring, man. That like you telling the kids don't like don't have the illusion. Yeah, yeah I mean, because half of the shit you're looking at ain't real either. So you know you trying to keep up with with them and spending your real money on fucking shit that they not spending that real money on. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah. You, you you listening and telling your kids to do shit. They tell your kids what to do, and they not telling their kids to do that shit, that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's different. It's different. Yeah, man. You, you got kids, presumably. Absolutely, I got two boys. Nice. Yep. Yeah, man. Boys. I'm not. I'm not going there, dude. No, no I, kids I, ever. I, nah, I got a vasectomy. Oh. Well, when? Uh, it's been six years since I Oh, okay, one. cool. All right, so no kids before that. Correct. Okay, cool. I, man I managed to uh, keep my pullout game strong. <laughs> not, not very good. Very good. Very yeah. good. Well, I mean, so so what is that? It's by choice. You just don't want you don't want kids or you don't want the I, responsibility of kids. I, I mean, it's everything. I, I really believe that... Uh, the uh, on some level i respect the the magnitude of what that means mm -hmm. you know like um i i look at the the world with the dwindling opportunity and the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer mm -hmm. and 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 college degrees they don't mean shit anymore mm -hmm. everybody's in debt and and i just think man like i, I don't i don't know if i want to create a, a a human to to struggle against all mm. that you know i'd rather take an existing human and improve their situation than create a new one mm. and i know that that's like fear-based thinking yeah but uh but uh, at the same time like uh i i just have that fear 
and and, and I don't want it on my conscience that I, I created a, a, a person to suffer and struggle. And I also recognize that, uh, man, I, I, I'm a busy guy, dude. I don't have time. Well, you got choices, Steve-O. You, <laughs> <laughs> you just described something that nobody... That didn't happen like that for me, but... <laughs> all right, I was told, hey, right. motherfucker, I'm pregnant. You know what I'm right. saying? So you're having a kid. Right. Yeah. There was but, no, like, hmm, I wonder if they're ecological. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sitting down and like, 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 What the fuck kind of world are you living in, Steve-O? Right. You just you didn't fuck the right girl, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> you just you had selected you did good selection, bro. You right. were, whatever you was on that yeah. night, you was good. <laughs> that's so good. That day. Yo, yo, that, but that's but it. that's how I was told. I had my first son in nineteen, and I was just told like, oh, well, I'm pregnant, so we're having it, and that's it. Wow, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. Are you gonna do? They, they say if you if you're gonna wait for the perfect time to have a kid, then just don't bother because you're never gonna be a perfect time. Never, there's it's never a perfect time. It happens. happens and it happens. Right. You know. Um, so my youngest is 13, and um, yeah, I, and, and it's just you know I I I was in a better place. I every all the boxes on paper were checked off. Everything was was great. You know, let's 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 do this. But then there's always going to be a different set of issues and problems. It's never going to be the same. Like my, me and my sons, you know, issues happened because I was young and I was a child having a child. I was 19. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So now it's just a whole different set of issues. Just just the same irritating as fuck. You know what I'm saying? You're dealing with teenagers and, and <clears throat> growth and, you know, sure. you're dealing with a smaller version of you. On a, and, you, you know, nobody likes to meet themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's a great reminder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, but it's, it's always good to be able to see, you know, the brighter spots of when they achieve something and, and you know that you've, You've guided them in the right way. You know, there's something to that. You know, I tell you what, having a kid just made made me definitely more accountable and aware and in the moment and present. And my maturity level, like, really shot past where I was supposed to be as a kid. You yeah. Know? There's no middle ground. There's no in between. Either you rise to the occasion or you fail miserably. There is no middle ground. You can't do okay being a parent. Either you fucking nail it or you don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It, it, it's tough, man, and uh, I, I salute you. So, so your oldest would be 30 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah almost 30. He's 29. Okay, yeah. and and uh, what, what, what's he do? Uh, he works with a clothing company called Bape. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and he's, he's uh, been there for a while. And uh, he just, you know, he he goes to the corporate office in Japan and all that shit. He's dope, you know. And he he does music on the side, you know. But but he's he's happy, do make it blazing his own trail, you know. And uh, I let him have his space, and you know, he's he's very proud of what we've done and all that stuff. But he wants to do it himself, and I get that. Does he help design for Bape, or is it more uh, the business I think, side? I don't think the designing aspect. I think he's more on the retail side. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well. All right. Shout out to Bape. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what up? I guess you got you got the podcast yes. coming out. Have yes. you launched it yet? Yes, yeah, so we got some episodes out on Spotify. It's the Lasagna Ganja Podcast. The Lasagna Ganja Podcast. Yes, and then I got a new album coming out. Um, it's called Kingmaker. It's my final solo album. All right. Yeah. And what number album is that? I think it's going to be eight. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, and then I'm going to be hitting the road. I got some shows with Cube in, um, in May, starting off. I'm coming back to drop the record in between now and, and, and April. Um, we did one leg already, so we're going back to do the second leg in May. Uh, straight into Canada, tour with Ice Cube and myself. Um, yeah. Does yeah. it feel good to be back on tour? Fuck yeah. It feels great. You know, going out there and still having the staying power, still having the music. Um, being able to actually get up there and do it, you know what I'm saying, with all my folks and, you know, a lot of newcomers, a lot of people showing up, doing arena shows, not bad. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Um, 
is music, tour, podcast, yes. weed. Yes. What, uh, any, any other businesses? <laughs> no, man. That's, that's, that's quite enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, uh, that, that, that's good, man. And, uh, you got a lady? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the only way I could do it. Um, I couldn't imagine being single right now. I couldn't imagine. What, at your age or at this day and age? Both. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm uh, I'm right there with you, man. Bro, bro, do you have a lady? I do. Okay, man, can you imagine? I'm like, bro, we, like, I came up with encyclopedias and fucking dictionaries. Like, there was no, <laughs> there was no fucking Instagram. There was no swipe left, right. swipe right. There yeah. was no... Only fans, it was like, yo, this shit is fucking crazy. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like going on a date now. Like, I hear horror stories. I got, I got a couple of homies that, you know, got out straight out of relationships or break, getting out of marriages, and you know, we talking and they're telling me what they going through, and I'm like, fuck, dude, it's like fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I'm right there with you, man. Man, yeah. this shit is wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got, you got to walk around with NDAs. Yep. <laughs> uh, motherfucking blood test. I don't know. Uh, if that, I don't even know if that's gonna help you. Yeah. No, you got to do it on the spot. You got to NDA sign it first. Yeah. And then I'm gonna give you a blood test. I got a little quick response to see if you <laughs> got them alphabets going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. See if you got yeah. any alphabets. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then we gonna do some more shit. Like I got, a, I got my therapist here. She gonna give you a quick little hour. You know what I'm saying? Come back, ask some important questions. You know what I'm saying? You know, before we change any body fluids, let's do a little COVID test. Yeah. Along with a little, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, you got to yeah. have it all right there. You know what I'm saying? It's like like damn near fucking getting into another country. <laughs> right. It's harder. Yeah, but you got to go through all fucking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, customs. Customs, yeah. Yeah. Fuck I mean, that. dude, you're not, you're not lying, man. It's, uh, and, and it, it just the, the stress you know, like the, all the stress, the yeah. time, the time that you waste. Like, so it's, it's really cool to to know that my side of the street's clean. Yeah, that, that, that I do right by my lady. It takes a that, long time to get to know someone. Mm -hmm. Just know that. Yeah. You know, even when you think you know somebody, it's still a little something you didn't know that's gonna jump out at the end, <laughs> scare the fuck at you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yes, I am with someone. I've been with them for you know, uh, I'd say, a few years now. You know, everything is going great. Um, I'm okay. I'm good. I couldn't imagine going and trying to meet someone new. Yeah. Like, that was fucking absolutely not part of the equation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it, man. I, 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 I respect you. Uh, likewise, Steve. Oh, yeah, on, man. man. Come Dude. on, man. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Absolutely. So, the, the, the album... Yes, Kingmaker. Kingmaker. Yes. And and, and and that's out, it's not out. Not out yet. Okay, yeah, do we have coming, a date? Yeah, coming in April. I'd like to cut April or May. But we're April. finalizing mix and mastering now, artwork and all that stuff. I've been talking about this thing for a while, but I'm really proud of this. I wanted to make sure that before it came out all the all the all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted. Um handling my business yeah. to, make, to make sure that I don't feel slighted just throwing something out and then not have the support or the recognition or the, or the attention that it's supposed to get. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? How long did it take you to make? Well, I started and stopped a few different times, but it was, it was when this guy named, uh, this guy, uh, my, one of my business partner, Tato brought in this guy named Duke, a producer and this, uh, and, and my man quest and my engineer having these two guys come in is that the food truck Jesus coming in? Christ. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> uh, having those two guys come in really put, like, the energy back into the process um, because I started getting what I needed as far as production, as far as, like, the speed of what I needed to create. And that's what we were able to, to dial the album in. It's really dope. That's epic, dude. Yeah. All right, man. Well, everybody get your tickets for the tour. Yes. Get the album in April or May. Yes, yes. Listen to the podcast, yes. the Lasagna Ganja. Yes. <laughs> and buy the weed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buy the weed in Bel Air. That's right. Yeah. Exhibits West Coast Cannabis. Yeah. That's, uh, soft launch is going to be on the 16th. I don't know when this is going to air, but it's going to be on the 16th. 420, come check us out. Grand opening at um, XWCC in Bel Air. Come check us out. Yeah, the, the, the fresh... 
Buds of Bel Air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Hey, thank you, Rex. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet yeah, you, too, man. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. There you have it, folks. I dare say that that was about as entertaining as a Wild Ride episode's ever been, right? I mean, what a great dude. And here we are at the end of an episode. What can I tell you? Um, the house is empty. It's going on sale. And maybe like in the last week it already sold. I don't know. Fingers crossed. But uh, I'll catch you guys in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>